So I will give an introduction of the Brahma Kumaris. I know some of you are first timers here. Um, this Brahma Kumari organization was founded in the year 1937 by this individual. You can see the picture here. His spiritual name is Prajapita Brahma. It is headquartered in Mount Abu um, in India. It has um, international headquarters in London. And we have about, I think close to 10,000 centers in more than 110 countries. It is a, not a profit organization and it runs through voluntary contribution. It is also affiliated with the UN since 1980. And I think we have more than 700,000 individuals of different faith, belief system, different age groups. They practice this meditation. And um, the concept that we are going to share today was spoken through the mouthpiece of this individual Prajapita Brahma. I just want to mention one thing that when the concepts are being presented, it is good to have an open mind. Um, because we all come with our own beliefs and experiences. And um, when these concepts, which are, which could be new, and then it becomes very easy to, you know, have a comparison or um, have some preset, you know, pre mindset about based on the beliefs. If, if there is an open mind, then it is easy to take the concept as is. And then, you know, the learning process becomes a lot more easier. I'm not saying that you'll have to buy into this as is, but to get the concept of clarity of concept becomes easy that way. So I just wanted to mention about that. Before I get started with the session, are there any questions that you have about what I just mentioned about the course, the sessions and the expectation Looks like a no, I take it as a no. So this is a spiritual, um, you know, learning. We have got a lot of information about you know, the physical things that we are exposed to. But spirituality is something, you know, different. And that's what we'll try to explore. So the first lesson that we are going to explore is about the soul. Now you can see in this picture, 
this is a human body in this human body it is a construct from the five elements what are the five elements the five elements are earth air water fire and space all of the human body that are constructed or created is a combination of these five elements and if you look at this physical body you have bones muscles veins nerves and it gets a shape this is a body and this body we give it a name to identify individuals we we also identify ourselves based on our profession or we identify ourselves based on the role that we play like a teacher father mother student and this body also has five sense perceptions you have the eyes nose taste buds ears and the sense of touch all of these are the physical aspect the another thing that we are going to explore which we already know but we will go into little more depth to understand about the soul soul is a point of light which sits at the center of the forehead and this soul is invisible unlike the physical body the physical body we can see through our physical eyes but soul we cannot and the next image what you see is a human being the first one what you saw here is a human body and this is a soul where the energy of the soul is being spread throughout the body so combination of physical body and soul is called human being as long as this soul is in the body there is life when the soul leaves the body it becomes a dead body so i will give another analogy of this soul and body we have this car in a car there is a driver this car is equal to the physical body and the driver is equal to the soul when compared to the size of the car the driver is very much smaller and even here you will notice the body is so huge but the soul is just a point of light
one more analogy is we have seen the light bulbs. In the light bulb, the bulb is huge, but the filament what you have inside that is small. It is only the filament that gives light into a room where the bulb is placed. Now for a few minutes, let us try to explore this understanding of body and the soul. Body is separate and the soul is separate. I ask you all to sit comfortable wherever you are sitting. And if you are okay to have an open eye, that is fine. The meditation practice that we do is an open eye meditation. And for some of the people initially, it could be a little difficult to have an open eye meditation, but you can close your eyes while you're sitting. And then I ask you to move your fingers, the right hand. I ask you to close the thumb, right thumb. Right index finger, close the middle finger. Now open all the three fingers. Now close all the fingers of the left. Open it. Move the fingers of your toes. Now, if I ask you, who is moving the fingers? My mind. Your mind? So that means the fingers don't move by themselves. Right? Right. You're right. Whatever we do, whether we sit, get up, walk, it is the soul that does or give the instruction to the body to perform actions. So in that context, what does body mean to the soul? Body is like an instrument to the soul. I will draw one attention here. Whether we are aware or not, we describe our you know, body organs. say I have these hands, fingers, I will say my fingers, I say my face, my eyes, my hair, my chest, my stomach. All of these body organs, we associate 
the word my. Who is this my? This my is the soul. Soul resides in the center of the forehead. And it is the soul that says my eyes, my face, my hands. It is the soul that references or prefix to the body organs. And you'll also say my body. You don't say I the body, but you say my body. So something to explore a little bit about the real self to identify ourselves as soul is a journey, but it is real. Yeah. Let me go back to this image. Now again, as we sit comfortable, we close our eyes. Mohain, I'm sorry. Can we ask whoever that is to put their phone on mute? It's an iPhone. Let me see so, if I can. No, it, it, it's the iPad. Yeah, iPad, one of them. It's just... Yeah, it, you can... Mohan, you can click let, the let me, I will I will try to mute everybody. Is it better now? Yeah, I think you can't speak now because I've muted everybody. All right. So I just sit comfortable and let us explore the identity that I are a soul. I, the soul, I sit at the center of this forehead. and I am separate from this physical body. I give instructions to the physical body and I perform actions using the physical body. I use this physical eyes to see the physical world. I use the ears to hear sound. I in the soul use the mouthpiece to speak. I in the soul use my hands to drive the car, pick up things, cook food, eat food. Even though I'm a tiny point of light, but I control everything. 
I am the boss. Thank you. What we just experimented was to get into identifying that I am a soul. Physical body is different. The one who operates the physical body, the soul is different. When we practice meditation, some people ask, what time should we, we should we meditate? How should we meditate? Meditation is nothing but remembrance. When you have a conversation with anybody, you just don't sit at one place and then converse. You can have conversation while driving, while talking, while walking, while doing other things. Meditation is exactly like that. To anchor myself that I am a soul, not a body. To look everything inside out. Start practicing to look from inside out. And I am a point of light. And then I am interacting with the other person who is also a point of light. It is a new concept. new approach. Yeah. Let me share the PowerPoint again. Now we'll explore a little bit about the soul. In a soul, as I explained earlier, it is a point of light and soul was never created. Soul can never die. All of our physical body has a start date and an end date, but soul does not. Soul, just like how the body has different organs, hands, legs, you know, stomach, heart, brain. Likewise, soul has three faculties or three subtle organs. We'll explore that. The first one is called the mind. In the mind you have images, It's like a blank screen where you think of something and then it shows up there on the mind. If I ask you to think of an orange, you get the image of an orange. And the second faculty is called the intellect, which is an observer. Intellect can analyze, it can investigate, it can ask questions, it can make judgment. It has the power of discerning. And the third subtle organ is the sanskars. It records all the actions that, was, that is performed 
using the physical body. Remember, soul is a point of light, which means mind is also a very subtle organ of this point. Intellect is another subtle organ or faculty. And sanskar is nothing but the memory bank. So mind, is, as I said, it's a blank screen. You have thoughts, desire, feeling, images. They all are put up in the mind, screen of the mind. And then what you think in the mind, the intellect uses that to process it, analyze it, and then make a decision. And once the decision is made using the physical body, actions are performed, and then gets recorded. When you repeat the same action several times, it becomes a habit. Collection of many habits determine your personality traits. And this is cyclic. Whatever has been recorded in the past, you know, creates the thoughts in the mind based on your past experiences, it feeds into the mind and whatever is there in the mind, it feeds to the intellect and gets recorded. So this is a cyclic process that happens between all these three faculties. Some people say that, you know, my mind, they complain about their mind that you know, I'm not happy or this one did something or because of this or because of that. Mind is the same for everybody, but the content in the mind is what the problem is. If the content of the mind is negative, which is not beneficial for me, then it can feed the same information to intellect and then the intellect processes that and then that's what you perform the action. Mind, intellect and sanskars are something like in the computer terms they say input, process and output. What information I put, put into the mind, if I am putting information that is junk information, waste information in the mind, intellect will process that. It will process the waste or negative or junk information. And what do you expect as the output? Output also will be not good. But if you start to put good information in the mind, and then the intellect can process good information, and then it can create a new habit by performing good actions. So what do you think is the practical um, value of knowing all the three faculties of the soul. What do you think is the benefit? By understanding all these three. Anybody? Can you ask that question again? I'm sorry. What is the benefit of knowing all of these three, what they do, 
mind, intellect, and sanskars. It, it helps with um, trauma that a person may have experienced, or even now in the midst of COVID, you know, um, the constant feeling of, am I sick just because I went outside? Or am I sick because I touched my mailbox? And so if you start to change how you think, then you probably won't feel sick as a result of it. Right. Very good. Anybody else? An awareness of the mechanics will help um, be mindful of what's going on. Yeah. You'll be more in control or yes. less out of control, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Let us kind of explore, you know, how these three things play with us and I will ask you to close your eyes. And remember, when you wake up this, woke up this morning, what you did, you went and freshened up yourself, brushed your teeth, had your morning coffee or tea. Then took shower. Probably you may have gone outside and came back. While sitting wherever you are sitting, if I ask you to visualize where you are, you know, fork or spoon in the kitchen is, you are able to pull the draw and pick up the spoon or fork. And imagine the chair that you sit in your home. get up and come back to the place where you are now. So you can play with this mind, intellect and some scars and see which one did what role in this little experiment that we did. What was the role of mind, what the mind did, what the intellect did, and what the sanskar did. One of the things that we have to understand about the soul or the next concept of 
the soul is about consciousness consciousness is nothing but the state of your um, mind at a given time um just to explain a little bit about this i'll give an example of say for example you are on a cross street and um, you notice a mother and a child crossing the street and a car comes and hits the child and the child falls down at the corner of the street there are three people one is a a doctor by profession the other is a lawyer and the third is a mother or an insurance um, agent now consciousness is something the scene that has happened is that the a car came and hit the child and the child has fallen down the three people who are here the person a lawyer will think what kind of um, case that can be filed against the driver and what specific um, case you know code that has to be filed for this case and for the insurance agent he will think how much of insurance money you know the child's mom can get because of this incident and the doctor can see in a different way so the the scene is the same for all, everybody but the consciousness is dependent on what you are if you think that i am you know an insurance agent or a doctor or a lawyer you think accordingly so it is important to know what conscious how conscious affects our inner being and also our um physical body okay. so here we go through this cycle of in this um, powerpoint so the state of conscious is i am and how i think you know i will feel accordingly and then my attitude is developed based on that feeling then my vision is also influenced by my attitude and then i perform the action based on the you know the feeling attitude vision and it gets into action and then i create a a world in internally so let us take an example here this is known as body conscious meaning the situation is my son disobeys me this is the situation and the state of consciousness is i am the father of this rebel son you know my son is disobeying me and i am the father and the mental 
our emotional state will be i get angry because my son is not listening to me what will be my attitude posture of a father that i need my son to obey me that becomes the attitude and what is my vision i see the vision a disloyal child and what is the action i perform i threaten him strongly that you cannot do this you are my son and what is the world i create an in internal world which is of conflict my relation is strained and that is my inner world whenever i have this body conscious if i identify myself as body and perform actions there are limitations i look at the color age gender role they are all limited then i create a world which could be not a pleasant one now let us take a new spiritual identity if i consider myself as a soul and then look at the same situation of sun disobeying me we just see the shift and the difference between body conscious and soul conscious so situation my sun disobeys me the state of conscious is i am a soul he also is a soul father and son are our roles then what happens mental emotional is i feel compassion because i am not looking from a limited body conscious perspective but i look at my son from a spiritual perspective as we understood soul is a point of light every human being is a, is a soul and body is the costume that they wear and the attitude father becomes understanding and what is the vision i see the opportunity for learning for both of us and the action is i call him for a friendly conversation the world i create improves relationship between father and son so you saw the difference between soul conscious perspective and body conscious perspective soul conscious to get into soul conscious it is also important to know the original nature qualities of the soul every single soul original qualities of a soul are peace love purity happiness bliss powers and when i look at the other person with the same energy level then my relationship 
give and take becomes a lot more positive and happy. So let us experiment a little bit with meditation practice on this. As you sit comfortable and close your eyes and visualize yourself to be a point of light at the center of your forehead. You are an eternal being This body is a dress instrument. I, the soul, my original nature is peace. Love. purity, bliss, happiness. I, the soul, I perform actions whether it is walking, sit, eat, I'm separate from this physical body. I use my mind where thoughts, ideas come. And my intellect uses that information And using this physical body organs, I perform actions. Practicing to be aware that I am a soul and remembering my original qualities. will help my inner world to be peaceful, to be happy. And it also influences the well-being of the physical body. Even though soul and body are different, they both work together. Thank you.
we will also talk about the cycle of thoughts how when a single thought is created in the mind what are the different stages or the breakdown before the thought gets implemented in the physical body or the different steps that happen internally which happens very quickly but it's good to know the breakdown in the mind we have thoughts and feelings and then we have the action that is karma through the physical body you perform actions and then this sanskars whatever the action that is performed gets imprinted as a sanskar and they are all interconnected mind feeds the action and action through the intellect and then it feeds the sanskar and sanskar feeds the mind now i want to ask you all there is this intellect you know whatever the information you have in the mind the intellect process that and then selects the one that is right for it to implement and whatever the action that is performed will get into the sanskar and this the sanskar that you have the old memories that influences the mind out of the three that is mind intellect and sanskar if you want to change your old habits where do you have to start this from from your mind in your mind say i i have some you know um, when i write some exams i i i fail and then if i have taken like few times and i have failed all the time so my recording of that is there in the sanskar now i need to break that habit of my old habit where will be the starting point assuming that they are all interconnected intellect intellect how because you are using it across right everywhere so where do you use the intellect like when whenever you are ready to take an action you are making use of an intellect right hmm so Similarly, in between this yeah or and the subsequent one here also yeah and here yes yes very good that's a that's the right answer because intellect is the most powerful um, subtle organ in the soul in order to break any old pattern old habits we have to train the intellect to bring the change mind is just a blank screen it puts up information there it is the intellect that makes all the processing all the decision making and it implements based on what it feels is right so how do we change the intellect to make it powerful for any self transformation the intellect needs to guide and support the new thought 
new action and new sanskar say for example i i love chocolates and i have eaten many chocolates in the past and it is there in my sanskar here i love chocolates and i go to the doctor and doctor says you should not eat any chocolates and when i see the chocolate box mind says don't eat because doctor said don't eat intellect says eat it it's okay what will happen in that kind of a situation who wins mind wins or intellect wins intellect how it's, it's able to convince you correct and what about the sanskar will they not influence they don't change you are you are reinforcing them yes already i have eaten many chocolates and it is recorded here whatever the facts they are all recorded here so whatever the information mind says don't eat and mind will get defeated either by sanskar or by intellect so having the disciplines of training the intellect will help break this cycle okay this is good to understand how this works and as we go through the different sessions and concepts we will get to know how we can work through these subtle organs to make it work for our better yeah <clears throat> with that i would like to have some meditation practice before we close for the day can i ask a question before that sure sure go ahead how do you now imagine keep continue to imagine like that you are a you are like a tiny light how to imagine yeah yeah so that is by uh, practice that is by understanding um you know like i gave some examples right if you look at um, while sitting here um if i ask you to go back 5 years you can go back 5 years if i ask you to think of tomorrow a month later you are still able to think and while sitting here if i ask you to go to a different location like san francisco you can immediately go there physically you are here so first understanding that soul is different body is different is the first step and then when you start to know more about the soul that soul has got no beginning no end and soul is on a journey using this physical body it is playing the part and then you get the understanding of the separation between soul and body and then you will also feel the energy and the, this is the concept that soul is a point of light if you look at the face it is the of the entire body you know if somebody is good looking beautiful they will look at the face and tell and soul resides at the center of the forehead this is the concept spoken 
with the mouth organ of that individual prajapita brahma and with little practice you start to feel it real it needs little practice and that is my journey too i didn't believe initially when i heard about it then i started to practice this that i am a soul i am a point of light i am not physical body and then when you i am creating a new thought i am using my mind intellect and sanskar i am feeding new information to the mind and the intellect starts to process that that i am a point of light my original nature is peace love purity happiness you can change your personality using the faculty of mind and intellect this is spiritual knowledge through that it becomes easy did i answer your question yes thank you sure any others have any question on the concept i take that as a no and let us do few minutes of meditation um before we close for today as you sit comfortable you may close your eyes bring your attention focus gently to the center of your forehead visualize yourself to be a point of light you are an eternal point of light you were never created you can never be destroyed the form of the soul is a point I never grow bigger larger small just the point of light my original nature is of peace purity happiness i am on a journey on this planet earth i perform actions using my three faculties mind intellect and sanskars
they create images thoughts on the screen of my mind my intellect discerns compares makes judgment they perform action they communicate to the physical body through the physical brain as long as i am in the body there is life to this body when i leave the body the body becomes dead just like how the driver is powerful than the car i the soul i am powerful than the body gently i try to hold this awareness that i am a soul i'm radiating rays of peace that is spread all over the body everything the body does is because of the soul's energy i the soul use the five sense perception to receive information from the physical world and send information to the physical world I gently open my eyes. And be aware that I am a point of light at the center of my forehead.
Thank you.